Hi, friends. I'm Luke. And I'm Kelsey. And we are the Pearsons. The Pearsons. Hey. <laughs> and we are here to talk about our one week update of Luke being on T. And just kind of what we did this week. Yeah. So it was a fun week. We're excited to actually do weekly recaps and updates because yeah. I feel like we've been saying this for so yeah. long. Um, so, yeah. So, cheers. We have non alcoholic mimosas and rose. Cheers. We are drinking because we are celebrating today is tea day. Mm-hmm. Tea day. It's so, tea time. Yeah, we love we love tea time. <laughs> um, so, so this week, wow, we've had we went to Bend, Oregon for for your tattoo appointment, mm-hmm. and we're working on your sleeve. Yeah, I'm working on my sleeve. My healing is pretty gnarly right now, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like in the itchy stage, but. I have a king card going here. I have the outline of the K's and the heart and a rose. Um, and then I have a Colosseum and my birth year in 1991. The Colosseum was not built in 1991. <laughs> you know, we, we all know this. And then David, who is giving me the most healing Yeah. Got some issues, issues there. Also, not issues, king but. is sneaky because it's K for king, but also K for Kelsey. Yeah, I'm the king of kelsey's heart that's right (laughs) um so yeah we we had that we went to bend for Mm -hmm. that and then we came back for a day and then we went to a cabin up in washington like two hours from portland which we actually had booked this cabin back in december Mm -hmm. and forgotten about it and then we're like oh wow like i'm glad we got a reminder email because it's already march yeah and so we went to the most adorable cabin Mm -hmm. i was super cute I loved it so much. I got a cold tour this week. I'm just going to go ahead and talk about that because I feel like it's an elephant in the room, even though you might not even be able to see it. I feel like you can. And so I've been in a mood all week because I can't kiss you and it makes me feel not good, as silly as that is, but yay. So that's I get them too sometimes. I'm sure many of you do too. It's just an annoying thing, but... Yeah, but the cabin, thank you, the cabin was so much fun. It had like a little hot tub and... Mm -hmm. Uh, We really enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. But basically, all week, we have been trying to see if we could see anything different about you. (laughs) Yeah. Well, first, let's show you some clips from the cabin. Yeah. um, Just to show you how cute the cabin is. and so cute. I'll even put the Airbnb listing in the description just because it's one of the favorite cabins that we've stayed in. Yeah. Um, And we can just show you basically all we did. I am... The king of the fire pit. No matter where we go, if it has a fireplace, literally, like, it has all my attention. Like, I gotta keep the fire All your attention going. all the time. Like, we're trying to watch something or play a game or something. And it's like, how's the fireplace? How's the fireplace? And it just has to make sure the fireplace. I want to be facing it. I want to be facing it. There's one thing I could change about the cabin. It would be that the TV and the fireplace were on the same wall. Because I was like, TV, fireplace, TV, fireplace. But, yeah, so, show you that most adorable cabin.
Bravo. Um, and yeah, all week we were just like, I would catch Kelsey staring at me like, you look different. What is it? Yeah. Was- I've been, been trying to figure it out. Yeah. I mean, we stare at me 24-7, so I don't know if y'all notice any of these microscopic differences, but things that I feel like I've noticed is I feel like my eyebrows are fuller. I feel like I've always had like a little more than peach fuzz on my chin and even like a little mustache. And I, but I feel like it's more. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's I think so too. more as in like the baby is a bit more. I keep staring at you and I, I can't, I don't know what it is, but something looks different to me. Like your head's wider or something. It's like sometimes when we take pictures to try to look at side by mm-hmm. side, we see a difference, but we don't know if we're just getting a different angle. Like yeah. it's so hard. I think we're just so impatient and ready yeah. to see changes that mm-hmm. our mind is like... Playing tricks on us. Yeah. We already feel like your tummy is changing, but we've also... And like your hips. But mm-hmm. we also started lifting again, so we've been lifting, and so it's like, or is your body changing a little bit because we're lifting or because your like, body is changing from your testosterone? I know. It's probably both. I mean, we're one weekend. Yeah. So I'm not going to show like before like progress photos until like a month because I don't want anyone to shoot down my joy and saying look at the microscopic differences I see and then people say I don't see any difference yeah you know which maybe there's not and maybe it's just our mind but I I like thinking that it's working already and that something's changing already yeah I feel like it and a huge amazing step of this journey is that I got my first binders this week and do you have it on right now? I do. I have yeah. it on, and I literally feel like a completely different person with this on. I was totally shocked. You were kept laughing at my face when you put it on. I know what it is. I understood that it was going to make you look flat tested, but I'm still picturing like a sports bra. That's what well, I was and thinking. that's why I never even I never even looked into getting one. I didn't even know that they existed for the longest time. Yeah. And. Despite that, I just figured I could wear really tight sports bras, mm-hmm. and that would help. I thought it was the same thing. It did. And yeah, I thought it was going to be the same thing. I didn't understand the, the biggest <laughs> difference that it would make, and I definitely had to have her help to put it on. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how anyone puts those on without someone to help them. I literally, my jaw dropped. I just was sitting there like... I know. Right when we got it what? on and I turned and looked at her, she was like... Completely flat chested. Yeah, I mean, it's insane. It's ins- like, look at the side profile. Like, it makes me so happy. I After I put it on this morning, yeah. I looked at my t-shirt drawer and I was like, so many options. I could wear any of these t-shirts yeah, and feel happy. Yeah, because you don't like all your shirts the way they fit oh, if they pull at your yeah, I'm so your... picky about t-shirts. Yes. Like, I've been wearing, um, like, oversized tees, which I like that style a lot. But a big reason of that is because it can hide my chest. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, like... I feel good wearing yeah. a smaller t-shirt. So we got you binders. Yeah, binders. You have your binder. Um, we've been getting you all the things that you need. I yeah. have, yeah, I have everything that I need. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited. And I did want to talk about, um, oh yeah, another thing I want to talk about was how I got my testosterone so yeah. quickly. So Huge. we we do have health insurance. Mm-hmm. Um but I haven't even seen um, the doctor through my health insurance. My appointment is April 8th. And so I was, man, I was so impatient. Like so many of us in the trans community were so impatient and ready for to take the next step. And um, Those who want to. Yeah, that's, yeah, I said so many of us. Oh, okay. Um, many of us that want to do um, testosterone or just any kind of hormone therapy. Um, it can feel like the longest waiting game. And so I, someone actually messaged me on Instagram, I forget who, wish I could give them credit, but they said, hey, have you ever heard of Plume? And I hadn't, and so I went and looked, and it's basically a virtual like telehealth Mm -hmm. company that was founded by trans healthcare providers, and over half of the healthcare providers um, in this company, in this healthcare network, I don't know what phrase I want to use there, yeah. but, um, over half are trans mm-hmm. 
and so or they understand yeah mm-hmm. and or queer um but just basically lgbtqia plus mm-hmm. community oriented and so they understand and they um you know they're genuine and compassionate and mm-hmm. anyways the best part about them is that there is really virtually no waiting so you can they have an app and so you basically sign up and do everything like um virtually and you choose your name, your preferred name and pronouns, and you fill out like basically like a health questionnaire mm-hmm. and answer questions, and then you set an appointment for a virtual um, call with a doctor on their team and or a nurse practitioner, because mm-hmm. that's actually who I talked to. And then within a week, sometimes the same day, you can get your prescription yeah. at your pharmacy. You had it the next day. Yeah, I had it the next day, and it was mm-hmm. just because my appointment my virtual call was at like 7 30 p.m mm-hmm. but otherwise I probably would have had it that same yeah. day um so I was sorry I keep looking over at my box of all my goods I was going to show you but I guess it doesn't really matter you can't okay <laughs> if you're so excited I am so them. excited so I ordered so, so when you get your prescription the doctor or nurse practitioner will prescribe the specific type of syringes um, but I ordered these on Amazon actually mm-hmm. just to get them in bulk. Um, they are lure lock syringes. And so um, there's ones that are called lure slip and lure lock, but you want the lock ones is what. It locks I've your read. needle in place. Yeah, it locks your needle in place and doesn't move. Um, so I got these on Amazon, 100 pack. I want to say it was maybe 10 or $15 for 100 of these, which is great. Um, and then I'm using an old shoebox just to kind of put all it. It comes stuff in, in Jordans. Yeah, it comes with Jordans. <laughs> just kidding. It's my one pair of Jordans. <laughs> um, and then I have extra alcohol swabs to clean the top of the testosterone bottle and to clean my skin with before I do the injection. Can we talk about how I give myself a shot? Like, yeah, I stick a we actually have a clip of it, crazy. so we should show that. Yeah, I'm going to show that. Oh, here is one of the old syringes. I mean, this never touched my body, but you know, I just threw it in here. Anyways, um, and then I use an old bottle to put the old needles in, or you can order one of those um, like sharp containers. Mm-hmm. You can order one of those off Amazon if you want to. And we also saw some people just use like an old laundry detergent bottle or anything like that where you can basically just store it mm-hmm. and it and it's safe. Yeah, and then you can look up, um, I don't have the link memorized, but um, one of the doctors at Plume told me about um, a link where you can find somewhere locally where you can Mm -hmm. safely deposit used needles. Um, So I'll fill this up and maybe we'll fill up an old laundry container and then go take them whenever it's full. Um, But basically, like, you get your needles. Um, These are the ones that go into my body to give me the shot. Yeah, so there's one needle that draws out the testosterone. Mm-hmm. It's a thicker, like, bigger needle because it, I guess the stuff is so thick. And then you put the needle that goes into your body on, so you have two sets of needles. I might have said that backwards. I did. The bigger number needle is a smaller needle, yeah. and so it's smaller going into so your skin. So 25 gauge goes into your skin. Yeah. And 23 gauge pulls the testosterone out of the bottle so like this so I have and then you want to together. keep it in like a cool place mm-hmm. so it doesn't get or not cool but you don't want it to get cold and you don't want it to get not hot. in the sun just not, just not in the sun so we keep it in a shoe box and keep it in my closet yeah away from you know puppies and kitties and all that um so yeah i'll show a little clip i'm posting um little video updates on my tiktok and instagram as well so if you want to follow me there it's at luke wesley pearson p-e-a-r-s-o-n um so i'll put away all my goodies real quick yeah um luke's getting ready to take his first shot (laughs) cannot believe this all right it's my first one so i have to get Oh no, we have to figure out what to do. This is crazy. This is crazy. Okay. 
That's the one that That one goes in your skin, I believe. This one draws out. Mm -hmm. Can you tell if one's bigger than the other? This one's bigger. Yeah, so that one draws out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This is crazy. I'm so excited. Okay, so you're going to put the syringe, take the syringe, put the draw one on it, clean the f little vial thing with that. Take your syringe <laughs> and peel it up just a little bit to open the top. Okay. Then take the draw up needle, the one closest to you, uh huh, mm -hmm. and do that. And then you're going to lock it in to your syringe. Okay, and then you're yeah. <laughs> Okay, it's locked in. Okay, yeah. so you're gonna take it out and take the little top off of the needle safe safely. Then you're gonna draw some air into that. Okay, then you're gonna stick it into the little thing. And I believe you're gonna turn it upside down and blow little bubbles into the liquid. Like blow the air into the liquid so you want your needle down in the liquid, I believe. Then you're going to draw past. Okay. Now hold it up. Yep, and you're going to get this here. I'll help. Then you're going to wipe your skin. So one inch over from your belly button and down, and one inch down. You can do this. You can do this. Here's one's the first one. So don't push the thing until your needle's all the way through. Big breath out. Good job. Good job. Good job, Bubba. <laughs> Are we celebrating for Daddy? I think I did it. You did it! Oh my gosh.
I just took my first shot of testosterone. Okay. I'm not a bleeder. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> What'd you just do? I just took my first shot of testosterone. <laughs> so my name is Luke Wesley Pearson and I am 60 seconds on testosterone. <laughs> do I look any different? You do. My voice deeper? Yeah. Got some chin hairs? <laughs> I love you. I love you. You did such a good job too. He was really nervous. His like hands start to sweat and oh, stuff right yeah. before. It's did, like dripping sweat. Pops. Like so nervous. And then he's like, oh, that doesn't even hurt. It didn't hurt at all. Oh, another thing that happened. Sorry, weekly update. So from your shot, which we found out is completely normal, mm -hmm. but you get a lump. You have a lump in your belly where you a gave the first shot. So mm -hmm. you should like give the shot and massage it a little bit. So you can see where the bruise was from my first shot. Yeah. So it's a little lump in it kind oh, of. Oh, it feels better than it did though. Yeah, I think it'll get better. So I do subcutaneous injections, which just means into fat instead of into muscle, which I think is the uh, most updated recommended way to administer your uh, tea. And so you just alternate sides on the stomach. Um, or Some people you, do it in their thigh. Yeah, on the top of the thigh. Um, or where else? I mean, the butt would be muscular. Um, but anyways, I did a tummy and it didn't hurt at all. We've had some people say it hurt them, so maybe it's just preference or... And when they say it hurts, they say that it burns a little bit. Okay. Um, but again, like such a small needle, I literally didn't even feel it go in. Do you feel the medicine, the testosterone go in? No, I didn't feel you anything. Don't. No, the only thing is that like when you put the needle in, you have to... It can be some resistance when you're pushing the testosterone out of mm -hmm. the syringe and into your body. So you kind of have to like hold it still, um, which is a little bit, it's, that's just a mental thing because you don't feel it. Okay. But so we noticed you're not. So we mm -hmm. took your shot on March 11th, which was a Thursday. And then we went to the cabin on, we left on, to, we left on Sunday. So Monday, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we noticed your lump for the first time. So it took a few days for you to get your lump. You noticed it at the cabin because you thought you'd been bit by something. I, it was actually the day before. Okay. Because I thought I had like a mosquito bite or something because I am usually walking around without a shirt. And so. And it was like itching. There was kinda, a bug. It? Yeah, it was itching. It was itching a lot. And then it's kind of like when you get a bruise and as it's healing, it itches and you know, you can feel the little lump of the bruise. Don't itch. You Yours don't? say that. No. Mine do. And I bet there are people that have experienced this with me. So, I'm or, sure there is. Like, if you get a scrape with a bruise and, like, the healing process just itches. Mm -hmm. Just, like, with my tattoo, it itches when yeah. it heals. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was, like, itching it, and then I was feeling the lump, and I was like, what? Is this normal? Um, and I was, like, freaking out, like, oh, my gosh, like, I injected it wrong. But like, I'd actually seen it before, because I was stalking someone on Instagram, and he was asking about testosterone, and then... Quit stalking, I'm folks. sorry. I'm trying to learn everything. Stalking. And then, so I went back and stalked again, and found the comment where it was like, yeah, this is totally normal, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So, I guess that's why you alternate sides, so then I'm not injecting into that little lump area. Um, cause I'm wondering if by next week that will be gone. That's what I would think. Yeah. But anyways, so that was really the only thing that I didn't expect, mm -hmm. but a quick Google search told me that was normal. Um, I've been hungrier. Yes. I have definitely You're been hungrier. All, like literally all the time now I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm like we just ate. But okay. or, or when I'm eating, I'm eating like two meals at a time. It's not even yeah. like I'm... Like, Hungry we went to buy and buy, and you ate your whole meal, and you would normally only eat, like, half of that meal. Yeah. Because you know when you go to places that just give you ginormous servings, and you're like, oh, I can't wait to eat this and have leftovers later. I had zero leftovers. I ate it all in one sitting. We're also lifting again. So, it's, it's like... I know. What things are lifting, and what things are testosterone? That's so true. But maybe it'll just... The whole process will just... But compared to you... Very true. I'm just comparing myself to you, and I'm like, oh, you're not this hungry? That's true. Because she's lifting heavy, too. Yeah. I got a compliment yesterday at the gym. It was so cute. Um, um, uh, older man came up to me and said, 
I was squatting and I don't feel like I squat a lot because we've been out of the gym for a while. I just have to tell this because this is my weekly update. You do need to tell this. And I was squatting and I yesterday got back up to 135 and so I was squatting and he came up to me afterwards and was like, I just want to let you know that I used to be a power lifter back in my day and I really appreciate that. I've never seen a woman lift like that. I'm like, I have plenty of women that lift even more than me, but that's amazing. And I just felt super strong and super powerful. He said you were in a league of your own. A league of my own. (laughs) I'm literally on the rack next to her. I just give her a high five, and I was like. Also, I was really happy because he came up to me to say, you're the only woman I've ever seen that, and you didn't get misidentified along with me when you were lifting just as heavy, if not heavier. So you definitely lift heavier than me normally. I just meant at the time, I think we were on like the same weight. Yeah. But I was just so happy that he didn't say, like, yeah. both of y'all. Because, I mean, there's still some times that we're getting mis... You're getting misgendered. Mm-hmm. I think he probably saw these hairy legs. <laughs> and, you know, this manly aura that I have now because I'm <laughs> two weeks on to... You're right. Or not even two weeks. Just on. one eight, week. Eight days. Eight days on T. Just kidding. Jokes. But... Yeah, that was a good that was a good moment. I knew it you was. were so proud. I really was. That, you, like, you immediately were like, that just made your day, didn't it? I was like, yes, it did. You were just walking around. And, like, that was the beginning of her workout, so she was just, uh, uh. I'm get strong. It, get it. I'm get great. It. The, I'm whole, strong. <laughs> the whole workout. Get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Um, do we have any more weekly updates anything else that happened this week we went to a cabin we went to bend we it was a big week it was so much we it's like we needed to do things to yeah. pass the time because mm-hmm. so i was like i'm ready for one week to be down yeah i'm ready for two weeks yeah like i'm so excited for one month i mean like i'm excited for every step of the way but i wish i could Skip fast months. forward like week to week just be like week one here i am week two let me see week three what do i see week four here we go like I'm ready to be like month one, month two, month three, month four. Well, yeah, I think once I get to one month, that's what I'm going to feel like. I keep stalking people and watching their videos of like each month. And I'm like, oh my gosh, month three, month four. Like, I can't wait. So what's crazy is that in like May of 2020, I had this like health scare. So oh, yeah. I've, I've always or I guess I should say I've never had mm-hmm. regular periods mm-hmm. and like I'm talking I'll have one and be on for three sometimes four weeks and it's not super heavy mm-hmm. but then I won't have a period for three or four months yeah. after that and so like and you've always been that way I've always been like that and so I I don't know for some reason in May I was like you know what I probably should go see a doctor I should probably well, see well no. What had happened is you literally hadn't had a period at all in six months before we saw um, a doctor. Yeah. So we we're like, okay, this is a really yeah. long Once time. Once it extended to six months, it was like, okay, I need to go see a doctor. And so I set an appointment and I ran a bunch of labs and my prolactin levels were at like, gosh, I don't even remember the, the ranges now. They were just like, way higher Mm -hmm. than they should have been and so when you look up that it's called like hyperprolactinemia or something which just means very high prolactin levels and um and usually people that have this have a small benign tumor on their pituitary gland in their Mm -hmm. brain and so I was freaking out Mm -hmm. I was like I have a brain tumor I was like so scared um they ended up like In addition to the prolactin levels, they tested my um, cortisol, they tested my testosterone, Mm -hmm. my estrogen levels, they tested my TSH and my T4. I'm pretty sure they tested like everything. everything. People comment certain things all the time asking if you had this, but we didn't. You didn't have it. Yeah, I don't have PCOS. I don't have. um, You didn't have a um, pulmonary. What's it called? Pituitary gland? Pituitary gland tumor. You did it. What's a pulmonary? Well, I had to go through... Pulmonary has to do with your lungs. Oh. 
anyways. So after these labs, they had me come back two weeks later and check my, or a week later and check my prolactin again to make sure it wasn't a mistake or whatever. And so um, when they checked it again, it was even higher than the first time. And so they were like, okay, we need to schedule a brain MRI. So by this point, I'm freaking out. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like cry throughout the MRI, like so scared. Cause it, first of all, it's just a scary test mm -hmm. and I'm just freaking out. And um, anyways, came back, didn't have a pituitary gland tumor. And they basically said, well, in like a month, let's check your prolactin levels again. I have not had my prolactin levels checked again. What I took from all of that was that I don't have a brain tumor. I'm good. I'm not really freaking out about everything not else having, was negative. Yeah, everything else was negative. I wasn't freaking out about not having a period anymore because I was like, I don't want a period. And you know what I was pumped about? My freaking testosterone levels were at like the highest, highest. level that is normal for someone assigned female at birth. And my estrogen levels were super, super low. low. Just naturally. I got so excited about this. And this is like way before I even yeah. like was conscious of who I am as mm -hmm. a trans man. Like but that should have been like, hello, Luke. Why like, are you so happy? Why are you so you, happy about this? <laughs> that you have high yeah. testosterone and yeah. very low estrogen. I was like pumped, and so I mean, I haven't followed up on. We that probably stuff. should do that. Though. I probably That's should. not a good medical advice. It's not, I'm not giving medical advice. I'm telling my story, and I'm just saying that I was excited about that, and here we are. Yeah. And, there, it's right. just that basically that was another sign. Like looking back, there's all these different signs that you were trans. Yeah. So that was basically what you're saying was that you were so excited to learn that you had such high testosterone and such low estrogen. Like you were pumped for that. So that should have been a sign for us right there that you might I mean, be trans. Also, like the fact that you would be like envious of trans people and trans men and friends that we have and thinking like, I wish I could do that all the time like i wish i could be him who you don't do that baby unless you're trans. like you're not saying that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's like it's just the trippiest thing to make these connections you know and like everything seems obvious in hindsight yeah but i didn't have the examples i wasn't mm -hmm. i don't know it's like i also feel like you didn't have okay so when you came out as non-binary, we sat down and I asked you, do you think that you were trans? Because you didn't care if I said, like, boys, he, things like that. You just didn't want she labels and her labels and I was basically like, mom and anything like but that. she, her. Yeah. Just and also don't, don't call those. me mommy around the house. And like, yeah, yeah. So I was like, do you think you're trans? And I think you didn't really start to realize it either until we were like, okay, let's discuss this. And I think I actually said at one point, I I feel like you might be trans and you're like, we're just figuring it out. And I think having someone, I don't know. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Like having someone open that door for you of like, hey, this might be a possibility and you are still loved and you are still you and you were like I feel like that gave you permission for yourself to explore that does that make sense it did yeah no absolutely I was scared like she you kept opening the door and you know letting me know we could have that conversation now if we wanted to I think it was a few times yeah and I was so scared I was like no no I'm not I'm not trans. I'm just non-binary and I think if this is just new language that I'm not used to yet mm -hmm. and blah because blah, blah. it still didn't feel exactly right but then what I would do is I would sit and fester in my mind and be thinking about, like, am I, am I non-binary? Like, I'm trying to make sense of all my thoughts and stuff and, like, like being away from her. Like, I mean, she's sitting on the couch. I'm in the bedroom, like, you know, on my computer. But, like, I'm thinking, like, trying to figure myself out. I'm like, why is my brain feeling like this? Why do I feel like something's still not quite right? Like, I felt like... I mean, gender is definitely, you know, a spectrum. Yeah. And I felt like I went from, you know, something that definitely wasn't me to non-binary and feeling a little bit closer, but still not quite right. But mm -hmm. I didn't understand how. I didn't understand mm -hmm. why. I was like, I am just struggling so hard with my own identity and who I am. 
And then Kelsey opening up those doors of conversation, it was like, I kind of creep this way mentally, but I wasn't vocalizing it yet. Yeah, you weren't vocalizing it at all. Can I say something? Yeah. Sorry. The first time that you vocalized anything to me where I was like, oh, this is, this is a conversation we're about to have, was when I was like, if you could be a boy, what, or if you are a boy, what <laughs> name would you pick? <laughs> And you were like, I already know. I immediately already know. I was like, are you serious? Like, and you said, yeah, I've been thinking about it. And I was like, you've been thinking about what you want your name to be as the guy that you are. So we are getting closer. Like, like this we is are like getting pill- closer this to having this conversation. Pillow talk happening right yeah. now. Like I was laying on the pillow and I was like going under the book I was like yeah I already know what my name was. <laughs> I was like like it's I knew that as soon as I said these words out loud it was going to be real and it was yeah. scary yeah. I mean it was scary like of course I know that you love me yeah. unconditionally and support me no matter what but it's still scary because yeah. once you make something real like someone's mind or you know everyone's opinion and judgment of you can change just like that because mm-hmm. they're like wait I don't understand like yeah. you've been this person for so many years and um, but you're still the same yeah. person and I think that's what people forget it's and like, it is like you're still the same person that skin tor- turned orange when you were little because you ate so many carrots and you're still the same person that hit a winning run in against was it UCLA okay you still here comes Pearson you're still like the person that I married you're still the person that you know, like, all of these things that you've ever done in your life is still you. It's just going to have a different face and a different name. Yeah. Yeah, it's still the same person. The heart is still the same. Everything is still the same because this is who you already were. Like, you're literally just make, making your outside appearance match your brain. Yeah. And your heart. And that's beautiful. And I I think I'm just going to, I, I think I'm just going to be happier. Yeah. And you're definitely going to be happier more confident and mm-hmm. like I yeah I think that's just... you're already happier mm-hmm. I am. other than maybe a little impatient because you want it to happen faster yeah and I get but, hangry yeah so if we take away anything I say or do when I'm hangry I'm very happy <laughs> I immediately apologize sure. to her <laughs> I'm sorry but it still happens I'm like I'm sorry I'm hangry like yeah. Like three bites in. I'm like, okay. Ooh. Better. This is Luke. Hello. Good. Wow. Wow. <coughs> oh, I choked myself. Anyways, I feel like we went on a lot of di- different directions. We though. did. But that, okay. that was our week. That, that was yeah. a lot. That was it's basically lot. just vocalizing what we've been thinking, what we've been seeing, what we've been realizing. It's been a lot of focusing on you to see if there's anything that we can notice. It's been a lot of focusing on the past So you know, like, things that make sense now that you have came out as trans, focusing on the fact that you're still you and our love for each other and just making you become the person you were always meant to be. I love that. I love you. I love you. I don't know how anyone does this without a Kelsey. Like, truly. I, I know that I'm capable of doing hard things by myself, but I don't think that I could do life without you. I can't do this without you. Mm-hmm. It makes a world of difference to have someone who unconditionally loves and supports you. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, honestly, if you're the only person in the world that loves me and supports me. That's all I need. So I'm hoping that sharing this journey, like, so transparently from day one um, will help others, you know, see mm-hmm. that I'm a person a regular person with a heartbeat and feelings and uh, that's super funny and really talented and, you know, whatever. I'm a person and, Mm -hmm. like, this transition is something that I need to do to be fully me and I'm still going to be the same person no matter what. I'm just going to be happier and I'm Mm -hmm. going to match my outside with my inside and, um, yeah, I just... I hope that I can be, you know, representation and, you know, be visible for those who need it. Yeah. So. A light, like your name, Luke. Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you're out there and you feel like you don't have a Kelsey and you don't have, like, someone who unconditionally loves and supports you, we do. So, 
We love you and yeah. support you. And yeah. so we hope that you'll find comfort in being on our channel and following us and being with us on our journey because we want to be with you on your journey too. Yeah. So thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, I think that's that's all that I had in my brain. Uh, but if y'all have any questions that, of anything that maybe you weren't clear on or didn't cover, um, let me know in the comments and we'll be checking them, you know, over the next week and yeah. get back to you. And we'll so. see you next week. Yeah, see you next week. Every Thursday. Every Thursday. Love so you. So you can hit subscribe. So you can hit subscribe. <laughs> So you can hit subscribe. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Bye, Bye guys.